I believe in miracles because I believe in God. You are responsible before God for today. God wants to show His power and His greatness in our lives. Greetings in the name of the Lord. Welcome everybody, I'm Reverend Chris Mockamer, and today we have for you a special Ernest Angley Ministries classic, taking you to Miami, Florida years ago for a powerful crusade by Reverend Angley. And this message today will bless you. It's powerful, it's exciting. It's the message from the burning bush. Listen, and I know you will be blessed. That was for Jesus, and that was wonderful. I liked that, and I know he liked it too. The subject for this evening is the message from the burning bush. The message from the burning bush, and it still glows and burns tonight, believe me. And in Exodus chapter 3, verse 2, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him, speaking of Moses in a flame of fire, out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Well, Moses turned aside to see such a sight. He saw this bush burning, and it didn't burn up. He kept looking. He didn't know he was about to meet God in the biggest way that he'd ever met God. Just like you that had been to the upper room, when you stepped into the upper room, you didn't know the fire of God was going to fall upon you like it would never fallen before. You didn't know that you were about to see the greatness of God like you'd never seen it before. You didn't know you was that you would feel the presence of the Lord like you had never felt it before. Moses stood there, and the Lord spoke to him through the angel of God. It was, one of the, it was the greatest visitation that had ever been since man left the Garden of Eden. It was the greatest message that God had ever given to man. He had given Noah a great message, but it included just eight souls. This message included three or four million people and it was a message that would live for all time and eternity. It was a message of love. It was even a message of grace. It was a message of tender care, the care of God for a people who love Him and will look to Him for deliverance. It was a message of deliverance. It was a message of hope for those that had been in bondage so very long. It carried the message of even the cross, the blood on the doorpost. It carried the covenant of healing in it. I am the Lord that healeth thee. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about the message from the burning bush. And Moses stood there in the presence of God. Yes, that night that I went to the upper room, I stood in the presence of God. And the fire of the Lord came down upon me. The glory of the Lord surrounded me, and the Spirit of God filled me up to the brim. Yes, it was a beautiful time, a great visitation. Have you been baptized in the Spirit? Do you have the message from the burning bush? Pentecost is our burning bush today. If you thought there's no message from the burning bush, you're badly mistaken. This message that Moses received would burn in his heart not for a few days or a few weeks, but as long as he lived, the message from the burning bush would burn on the inside. That message would be carried to a multitude of people, and that message would be heard, listened to, and that message would be acted out. It was a message of doom and defeat for the enemies of God. So it was at Pentecost 
we learn the fullness of the power of Calvary. You don't really know the fullness and the benefits of Calvary until you climb to the upper room and you're baptized in the Spirit and the Holy Spirit comes upon you and the Holy Ghost Himself sheds abroad the love of God in your heart. And then you realize the love of God, the fullness of God's love. You realize the benefits of Calvary. You realize the greatness of the old rugged cross. The suffering, Moses didn't know how much he would have to suffer to deliver the message from the burning bush. He knew he didn't want to deliver it. He knew there'd be a great price. He hesitated, but the Lord gave him signs to go with the message. So has God given us signs to go with his message today from the burning bush, Pentecost. And every preacher should have the signs of God following his ministry as he goes forth. Peter, James, and John had this power. They had been to the upper room. They had signs and wonders. Some people will say, we don't need any signs. We don't need any wonders. No, if you want just dead people around you, you don't. But if you want to wake people up and get the young off of drugs and get the old to Calvary and get them made new creatures in Christ Jesus, you need some signs and wonders and you got to have them. The Word of God must be confirmed. Some people will say, well, we have the Word of God today. They had it. The Word came down and took on a wrapper of flesh and walked among men. And it was alive, alive, alive on the streets of Jerusalem, on the shores of Galilee or wherever in that uh, section of the world. Uh, and there were signs and wonders. People looked upon him and they didn't believe him to be the Son of God. But when he performed his miraculous works, many decided, uh, this is the Christ. Uh, and today, many people are deciding, uh, this is the Christ. When they see the blind receiving their sight, when they see people getting out of their wheelchairs in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. People that have never walked uh, maybe in all of their lives or maybe it's been many years since they have walked and children that's never, never walked and the doctors said they would never walk are walking today and people are coming to God because of the greatness of God. It's time for everybody to carry the message of the burning bush. Not only the ministers but all laymen. In the early church, they all carried it. Praise God, everybody became a witness. Everybody had the message of the burning bush. From the burning bush it had come. Ah, yes, they were in that upper room. And suddenly from heaven came a mighty sound of rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire. And it set upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Oh, hallelujah! There's Simon, Simon like Isaiah of old, Isaiah the great prophet, Isaiah that had said, Lord, I don't want to go. The people are disobedient. I don't want to preach your message. And an angel came down with a coal of fire from the altar of God and placed it to his lips. And he said, Here am I, Lord, send me. There was Simon saying, Here am I, Lord, send me. There was John, there was Matthew. There were all the disciples saying, Here am I, Lord, you send me. And Simon saying, you crucified him, you crucified him, you crucified him. Yes, that was a message that old brother Simon preached. Where did he get it? From the burning bush it came. Glory be to God. And it was alive on the inside of him. A message of Jesus has to be alive. It can't be a story that isn't real. Jesus has to be real to you before you can make him real to anybody else. And he has to be real. What a Jesus! I certainly do love him. Oh, Moses, go and tell Pharaoh to let him go. Let the people go. The message is a burning bush. Whosoever will, let him come. I have come, Jesus said, to set the captives free. Yes, and the message from the burning bush was, go tell Pharaoh to let the captives go free. And the message from the upper room is, there's liberty for all of those that want to be free. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, 
And if you'll open, Jesus said, I will come in and sup with you. Open up. Let him in. He's waiting for you. It's time for us to know God. It's time for us to get the Word of God and stay in the Word until we hear from heaven. Have you ever really heard from heaven? Some people's never heard any more from heaven than the stars coming out at night or the moon coming up or the sun shining by day. That's the only answers they've ever had from heaven. But this Bible tells you that you can be born of the Spirit of God. This Holy Bible tells you you can be made a new creature in Christ Jesus. This Bible tells you you can go to the upper room and be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And Jesus, with his message, go preach. This is the message from the burning bush. And he's saying, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. In my name they shall cast out devils. In my name it will be done. And in my name they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall get well. That's the message from the burning bush. <laughs> Hallelujah! Glory be to God forever. I love the message from the burning bush. What if Moses hadn't had the burning bush message? He'd have never led the Israelites out. And we're not going to lead the people out, preachers, teachers. We'll never do it without the message from the burning bush, the message of Pentecost today. It has to come from the fire of heaven. It must come. And it must be a message that's ablaze with the goodness of God and the love of God. Signs and wonders. Are you afraid? Are you afraid that the signs of God will turn into fanaticism? If so, you need to get to the altar and repent. <clears throat> Many people, the Bible's just a dead book to them. No wonder some people's teaching evolution. The way some preachers and Laban act, if I hadn't known any better and just looked at them and didn't have, a, would never have had a mom or a daddy that really believed it all to have taught me, I might have got hooked on that devilish doctrine too. But thank God I never remember the first time Mama told me about heaven and Daddy told me about Jesus. Oh, glory be to God. And I don't remember the first time they told me this book is a holy book. And I could believe it all and never doubt any of it because God would do everything He had promised. And I don't remember the first time they ever told me that God would keep all of His promises. That every promise in the book is mine, every chapter, every verse, every line. And all I had to do was live in His love divine and claim the promises of God. Isn't that rich to claim the promises of God? The Bible said when you've done all, when you've done all, when you've claimed the promise, then you just wait for the fulfillment of them. When you've obeyed God, you just wait for the fulfillment of the promise. You patiently wait. And some people say, God isn't doing it today. We don't have time to give them the time of day. They're not worthy of it. Let them get the time of day somewhere else. We're too busy rescuing the lost. We're too busy going out, bringing in that little lost lamb. We're too busy uh, helping people find Jesus. Uh, oh, we're too busy praying and fasting and living in the Word of God. Uh, and we're hearing from heaven every day. Oh, yes, we have a hotline. Glory be to God. And we can talk to heaven just any time. Uh, isn't it exciting to talk to heaven just any time? Pick up the hotline and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, it's me again. Uh, oh, hallelujah. And it goes straight through. Nothing can stop it. Uh, isn't that beautiful? Uh, you tell the Lord about your burdens. You tell him about your cares. Uh, and it's so exciting. Uh, and you have so much love. Uh, you begin to offer up everybody you know. <laughs> and you say, Lord, here they are. Here's this person's burdens. Here's that person's burdens. And Lord, the neighbor across town. And then when you get through with all the people around you are praying for people in other states and other countries. Such love love, such love. It had to come from Calvary. It came from the message of the burning bush. It couldn't have come from any other place. Moses, go tell the devil that the captives have to go free. That's our message today. 
Devil, loose them and let them go. You can't hold them any longer. You can't keep them any longer. Let them go free. Let them go free. And every person we can find, if there's a cry, just a tiny little faint cry, on the inside they can be set free. I meet the devil possessed. And if there's a tiny faint cry, maybe I can't hear it, but the Spirit can. The Lord delivers them. No matter how many devils possess them, they are set free. They cannot be set free from the demon powers of hell unless they want to be free. Free. But if they want liberty, if they want freedom, there's liberty and freedom in the message from the burning bush. What happened is what joy for Moses to carry. What signs and wonders. Those people that don't believe in signs and wonders today, they wouldn't have believed in Moses' rod in that day either. He turned into a serpent. At first, Moses didn't believe in it uh, that he wanted to carry it around. He ran from it. But when he found out it was God's sign, he had sense enough to go back and pick it up. Uh-huh. And the Lord showed him his healing power too. And the Lord showed him what he could do. And he became a leper. All of a sudden, thrust his hand into his bosom, and he became a leper. Pulled it out and looked at it. Why did snow thrust it back in at the command of the Lord? Pulled it back out. And that hand, the skin became as his other skin, pure and clean. That's how quickly God can heal. That's how quickly God can cure. And then people will dare doubt God today. Aren't you ashamed yourself? If you're a doubter, you ought to get on the seat right now and stay until I finish this message or until you start believing God. It's time to believe the Lord or shut up one. Stop playing church. There's no need to go to church if you're not going to believe God. It's a shame for you to be there because if the sinner happens to come by, I said if he happens because if they're all like you, there's no fire there. It takes fire to draw people. If there hadn't had this burning bush hadn't have been burning, uh, Moses wouldn't have stopped. He'd pass by a lot of bushes and he didn't stop. Oh no, but this one was on fire. There's a lot of people passing by dead churches today and not stopping. Get yours on fire and the people will stop. You say we can't get the people in. We can't get the people saved uh, unless they come. Well, you get the fire burning and they'll be there. You holler fire and people want to know where it is. If it's in your bosom, they want to know if it's there. They want to know the story of it. Uh, and if it's spiritual fire, they're concerned about that too. If Jesus had come and acted like a lot of so-called followers of him today, we'd have never heard about Jesus. No. But he created a sensational work before the people that's lasted all of these years. And the skeptics, although they won't accept him, they still talk about him. They can't get away from him, just like people about the Ernest Angley Hour. Some of them won't believe it, but they have to tune in and watch it anyway. <laughs> oh, yes, they can't stay away from it. And so they're there. And I can tell by their letters they're really watching. <laughs> and that's good. That's really, and they can't stay away from it. And many of them, they'll watch a few times the next thing you know, and they'll write me a letter and say, I don't believe all that. And then maybe a letter will come a little later apologizing. <laughs> apologizing, saying, oh, we thought it was a big show. We thought it was a big laugh. But the, about the third time, we became sober. And about the fourth time, we were getting out the Bible. And we, be, we were amazed to find out all that you were doing was in the holy book, and we knew it not. And now we want what you have. We want the joy of whatever it is that makes you so happy, we want it. That peace that you have, that you, we want it. We want that something that you have. We want it, we want it. Well, I got it from the burning bush. It's the message from the burning bush. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, Moses, take off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. Isn't it wonderful when we get on holy ground in the presence of the Lord? and it's sanctified, even the ground around us is sanctified, and some people don't even think that a human life, a human soul can be sanctified while the ground was even sanctified. If God will sanctify the ground, you know he'll sanctify you uh, because he died, Jesus died for you, and you know that he'll sanctify you. What a beautiful sight. Moses made his excuses, but God didn't withdraw his signs. Uh-uh. Well, who am I going to say? sent me. I am sent me. And that's the message from the burning bush today. I am that I am. Not I used to be, not I was. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is saying, I 
Him has sent me, and I held the message of the great I Am from the burning bush, and I declare that the blind are receiving their sight, the deaf are hearing, the crippled are being made to walk, and the poor are having the gospel preached to them. Oh, that's all John the Baptist needed to hear, and he said, that's the Christ. He's really the Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Yes, He is the Christ, and when He is preached and not stripped of His glory, and when He is delivered to the people, a whole Christ, He delivers the whole man, soul, mind, and body. Healing for you this evening in this service if you'll reach out and touch the Lord. But some of you have been saved for years and you think it's God's will for you to be sick. Don't you know the Lord's tired of you grunting and complaining? Don't you know He'd feel happy? to hear you praising Him and saying, Lord, I don't have a pain. Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Thank you, Lord, I'm going to sleep now. Thank you, Lord, I'm rejoicing in you, and I love you, and I appreciate you. Some of you, you'll declare the Lord has the greatest love that, that's ever been shown to humanity, and yet you as a mother or daddy will do anything to heal your child, to cure your child. You'll give your life savings. And maybe you've worked for years and years to save up that money, but you'll give it all to save your child, to bring health, restore health to your child's body. And yet you don't believe the Lord loves you as much as you love your child. You need to take another look at the burning bush. You need to take another look at the burning love of Almighty God and get the coals of God's fire burning upon the altar of your heart and let the Holy Ghost shed abroad the love of God in your heart and you'll realize He loves me, He loves me, He loves my child. He loves us, He loves us, and He will bring deliverance to us because He is able, He has the power, and He will do anything for us because we love and serve Him and we're obedient to Him. How marvelous indeed. Moses with the message. Moses with the signs of God. And that's what it's got to be for the ministry, for the layman. We got to have the signs of God if we're going to have the message from the burning bush. And you're not going to have the live message, the true message from the burning bush without the signs and the wonders of God. It's impossible. Well, the deacons had it in the early church, right? And the elders had it. They went forth to pray for the sick. And now all the elders, they're so dead and dry, they don't even believe in praying for the sick. They don't believe God will heal them. No, sir. But come to think of it, their preacher doesn't believe it either. And that is bad, isn't it? But I believe it all. I believe that... You can pray for yourself and God will heal you. And I believe you ought to pray for yourself first of all when you get sick. Friends, shortly we will take you back to this powerful sermon, but I want to take this opportunity right now to encourage you to help us to continue to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with the world. The motto has always been here in this ministry, win the lost at any cost. And friend, I want to encourage you, donate. You can do so through our website, ernestangely.org, or you can mail in your monthly support. And for those of you watching in Canada, we have a special mailing address for you to use, a Canadian address. But friend, when you stand by this Jesus ministry with your tithes and your love offerings, God promised through his word that he would bless you. Tithing, giving love offerings, this is God's financial plan, not only to support his work that it wins souls, but also to bless his people. Because he promised he would open heaven's windows upon your life and pour out blessings in abundance in such a way you would have not room enough to receive it all. And friend, the Lord just, he not only blesses financially, he goes beyond. He'll bless you spiritually. He'll bless you physically. Blessings, blessings, blessings. Prove the Lord in his word that he's true. And remember, each month that you sponsor this worldwide outreach ministry, you will get a new giant little book of the month. And these are little books, but they're giant with a powerful spiritual message. And the November giant little book is Do Right When It's Easy to Do Wrong. This is a very sobering topic, and I know this message will bless you. So when you send in your support for the month of November, request offer P 
three, seven, two. And friend, I want to encourage you when you do send in your support each month, you'll get a letter of blessing and encouragement. And the November mailing is entitled, Our Lord Loves to Be Praised. And indeed he does. You know, November is Thanksgiving month and we owe the Lord many thanksgivings for all of our blessings. We can never praise and thank the Lord enough. So join with us in thanking the Lord. Now taking you back to this powerful Miami, Florida crusade. And the Bible said, pray ye one for another that you might be healed. And then the Bible said, call for the elders of the church. This is a message from the burning bush. And they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. And then there's the nine gifts of the Spirit. Oh, how beautiful they are. Have you ever been to the burning bush? Have you ever seen the nine gifts of the Spirit? In the early church, they were hanging like nine perfect apples on a perfect tree. They were there. And the early church disciples believed in all the nine gifts and all the nine fruits of the Spirit. They believed in it all. That's the reason they got a real job done for the Lord daily. And you know what they were busy doing? Not talking about their neighbors, not criticizing each other, not saying, do you know the latest about sister so-and-so? Oh, no. Everywhere they went, they preached the Word, the Word, the Word. The Bible tells us the Word multiplied, the Word increased. It was the Word of God. And when the Word increases, the miracles increase. Anytime the Word of God is preached with God's faith, it produces miracles. And if it's not producing miracles where you are, it isn't being preached with God's faith. It's being preached with man's faith. You're quiet, but you're still there, and I'm preaching to you. <laughs> no need to get quiet. I just keep right on. I'm after you. But I'll never run you away from God. I'm running you toward the Lord. I'm running you toward the burning bush. It hasn't burned up yet. <laughs> Moses, I don't know how long he stayed, and it was still burning when he left. And when he left, it was still burning in his soul as he went down the road. When he stood before Pharaoh, the bush was still burning in his soul. The message, the message, the message from the burning bush. Oh, hallelujah. And then that night, that night when they took Holy Sacrament, that night in Egypt, after God had performed many signs and wonders, yes, it was the message from the burning bush in operation. Kill a lamb. Eat the lamb's body, take the blood, put it on the doorpost, and when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. Thank God for the blood of the old rugged cross. Thank God for our burning bush. It wasn't only Moses that had a burning bush. We have a burning bush. It wasn't just the Israelites that had a message from God. We have heard from heaven and everything's all right. If we'll just obey the message, everything's all right. We don't have to worry about inflation. We don't have to worry about starvation. The message from the burning bush is God will supply all of your needs. He rained down manna from heaven for the Israelite people. And God promised to look out for you. God promised to not let you starve. And if he has to rain down bread from heaven today and feed you on angel food like he fed them, God will look out for you. Keep your trust in the Lord, your whole trust. Look to God. God is still on the throne. God will not fail you. The Bible tells us in the last days men's hearts will fail them. Look, and things are coming upon the earth. I'm glad they're scared. It tickles me to see them scared. I know they don't have God. And if you're scared tonight, you don't have God or you don't have much of him. But if you are looking at the world conditions tonight and you're saying, well, the Bible said it would be like this and it's almost time for us to go home. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Moses, pull off your shoes. You're standing on holy ground. And our message from the burning bush is put on the shoes. The Word of God. Hallelujah. Slip them on. Put on the whole arm of God. And when you've done all to stand, then stand. Don't let anything defeat you. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. Some of you, there's a chase every day in your life, the devil chasing you. From the time you come out of bed till you go to bed. Some of you are so depressed. Some of you are so let down. Some of you let those old mental spirits just torment you to death. Don't you know that the message from the burning bush is, resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And you are more than conquerors. That's your message from the burning bush. 
So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Arise and take your stand. Come out of that bed every morning knowing who you are, know where you come from. Oh, it doesn't matter about your first birth, but you better know about that second one. Ah, yes, you better have your birth certificate for that one recorded in heaven. It better be there. Some of you have been so downhearted when you couldn't get your birth certificate to get your Social Security money. But I'll tell you something worse than that. If your birth certificate of the second birth is not recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life in heaven, and then you will be out. And it'll be more than a little Social Security money. And so you better make sure that your name's recorded in heaven. Uh, oh, glory be to God. Some people say, where were you born? Well, I'm not concerned about where I was born, but that second time, yes, I'm concerned about that. Uh, born and made a new creature in Christ Jesus. I know where it happened. I know when it happened. I know how old I was, and I was very conscious when it happened. When I was made a brand new me, it was a message from the burning bush, uh, and I stood in the presence of God in the glory of God came down and gave me a glow from heaven that I'd never had before. Oh, hallelujah! I had been made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things had passed away, and behold, all things had become new. It's time for the message of the burning bush. It's time to preach the whole Word of God. It's all in the Word. We have to have the Word, the Word, the Word, the Word. I like good music and singing, but you've got to have the Word of God to go with it. That's exactly right. Music won't do it, and singing won't do it. It takes the Word of God to run the devil off. A shout won't do it. You've got to run the devil off, and don't you shout till you get rid of him. You have to get ready to shout. Some people have been shouting before they got ready, and that's the reason heaven hasn't enjoyed it. And they shouted, and the walls were still there. Don't you shout till you see them coming down. And if you start in shouting and they don't begin to tumble, you stop your shout. You don't have a heavenly shout. You don't have the burning bush shout. Shut up. <laughs> the Lord told the Israelites to shut up until he told them to shout, and he didn't tell them to shout until they had a shout. And it took a lot of going around that wall before they got a shout. It took a long time before they got a shout, and some of you will have to go around the wall a number of times before you get a real shout too. Some of you have shouted, opened your eyes, and the devil was still there. You started back in shouting again, and opened your eyes, the devil was still there. Why don't you stop that shout? That's not a heavenly shout. Grab the Word of God and say, Devil, here I come. Get out of the way or get run over. I'm coming through. Coming through with God's eternal Word. Coming through. I have the message of God burning in my soul. I just heard from heaven. And the Lord told me he had given me power over you, devil. Now are you going to believe God has given you power over the devil? Then if he has, you act like it. Stop being a crybaby. You stand to your feet and say, I'm not afraid anymore. Jesus told the disciples, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. That's the message from the burning bush. There's Moses standing before Pharaoh. He had never dared stood there, but he had the message from the burning bush burning in his soul, saying, Pharaoh, I am sent me. Pharaoh didn't believe it. The devil's not going to move without the signs and the wonders of God. You have to land God's sign right on the devil our signs. That's right, and that's the reason the Lord gave us signs and wonders. <clears throat> and some people, they don't believe that we need them. I believe in signs. Jesus did. And he said there'd be signs for the believers. And anywhere you find believers, you find the signs of God. If you don't find the signs of God, you find a dead church, dead people in the, in the pews, and a dead man in the pulpit. And that's dead, dead, dead. <laughs> the man... <laughs> The message from the burning bush. Oh, it had life. It had deliverance. The Bible tells us there wasn't a weak one among them when they came out, three or four million people, and they were all healed. Not a blind person, not a crippled person. They didn't have to roll anybody out in a wheelchair, neighbor. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that great? Not a person. Blind, not a person crippled. The Lord made every one of them whole. The psalmist said there wasn't one weak one among them. Isn't that beautiful? I know it is. I think it's beautiful today to see the message from our burning bush, Pentecost, working in a most beautiful way. And Pentecost is not an organization, neighbor. Pentecost is an experience. Yeah. 
the burning bush. Oh, we were Baptist people. And when the message from the burning bush came to us that you could have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, things got going in our home. I'll tell you, when my sister came in at 2 o'clock in the morning, and the Baptists didn't stay in church till 2 o'clock in the morning, but when my sister came in baptized in the Spirit to wake my mom and dad up, there was real excitement, I'll tell you. But my mother thought she better go down and investigate and see what those people had down there. She had a born-again experience. The Baptists had done a good job on her. They had really taught her about Calvary. But she didn't know she could get to the upper room. So while she was investigating, the Holy Ghost fell on her. Ha, <laughs> ha! Amen. Isn't that beautiful? And she was baptized in the Spirit. It was a beautiful time, a wonderful time. And you start investigating this, and you'll get in on it too. I try to get everybody to investigate. I try to get people that don't believe in healing to come to my services and investigate. I tell them to come and attend, attend at least five or six services and just be there and watch with an open mind, and the Lord will reveal himself to them. We've got to have living reality in the Lord. You know, Moses, he had to know God, and he had to know the devil. And you got to know the devil, and some people, they don't know the devil. And that's the reason that we have the gifts of God. Now, some people, they declare that the gift of discerning and the gift of knowledge, those two gifts, that you say the first thing that comes to your mind, and the devil, the devil never told a bigger lie than that. The gifts are operated through the power of the Holy Ghost only. They are not operated by the man himself that God uses. No, absolutely not. But the Holy Spirit operates the gifts, and the message comes not by the will of man, but just like... God's Word came in the days of old, came not by the will of man, but holy men of old spoke as they were moved upon by the Holy Ghost. And that's the way the gift of discerning and the gift of knowledge will be working in this service tonight. It will not come by the will of Ernest Angel, but the Holy Ghost will move upon me, and I will say, Thus saith the Lord, and I will give you the things of God, the revelations of God for you in this service tonight. That is the message from the burning bush. And we need the gifts of the Spirit working everywhere throughout the whole earth in this, our final hour. Man in this final hour has tried to substitute for the gifts, and uh, they are human gifts instead of divine gifts. But the nine gifts of the Spirit are divine gifts. This was a divine message that Moses received at the burning bush. Divine gifts, divine signs. Uh, it was divinity. How wonderful and how great. It was a fantastic, un unforgettable time in Moses' life. And if you ever get to the upper room and you're really baptized in the Holy Ghost, it'll be an unforgettable time to you also. Many people are saying, uh, well, you just start speaking in tongues. You don't just start speaking in tongues. Uh, you seek God. You seek the face of the Lord. Uh, and the Holy Spirit descends upon you. And the Holy Spirit takes over your tongue. Uh, and it's not you speaking Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, and you don't start talking in tongues anytime you take a notion either. I can't talk in tongues anytime I want to. If I did, it'd be Ernest Angley, and it wouldn't be the Holy Ghost. Uh, the Holy Ghost uses my tongue, and he's the one that does the talking, uh, and he prays through me. But as long as he doesn't want to take my tongue, I pray in English through the anointing of the Holy Spirit until the Holy Ghost takes over, and then he takes my tongue, and he does the praying. Uh, he gives the utterance, uh, and he's making intercession to the Lord and not Ernest Angley. The Holy Ghost prays through me, sings through me, speaks through me, but it's all through God. He is the one. The Holy Ghost has preached through me a whole sermon in the Hebrew tongue, and I can't speak a word in Hebrew, and I can't turn it on, and I can't turn it off. Uh, no, sir, he is the one. And I went in the pulpit one night, and the Holy Ghost took me over, and the whole message was in Hebrew. And about everybody in the whole service was in the altar, but two or three people in that whole building. Scared people half to death. They knew I couldn't speak Hebrew. 
and I was praying in the German tongue, or the Holy Ghost was praying through me. At Grace Cathedral, a little lady jumped up. She didn't even wait for the communion. We were having Holy Communion. She didn't even wait for it to be over. She came running down because she was from Germany. I was praying in her native tongue, so she thought, but when she got to me, I couldn't talk to her in her tongue. No, sir, that was the Holy Spirit praying through me in the German tongue. And so you don't turn this on and you don't turn it off. It's time we got down to business and that we know in whom we have believed and we know the works of the Holy Spirit. We know the works of the enemy. We know the power of God. We know when God's using us. We know when it's self and we know when it's God. And we know when we have the message of God. And some people get into trouble trying to interpret tongues and speaking with other tongues. You're not to try to, with your own mind, Try to break it down to think what God is saying. If God wants you to know, he'll give it to you in plain English. And he'll give you the interpretation. The interpretation doesn't come by the will of the mind. It comes by the will of God, just like the message that's given in tongues. These are divine gifts. They are operated by divinity. And they're not operated by the human spirit, and we better learn it in this final hour. It's the message of the burning bush. And it's time you say you'll have people scared to death. I want people to have the real thing. I have sought God for years, and I know the way that I take, and I know in whom I have put my trust, and I know that his power is real, and I know that he's moving in this final hour, and I know the gifts of God are for us today, and I know the signs and the wonders are for us today, and it's time for us to hear from heaven daily. Do you really know the Lord? Do you really know him? Do you know Jesus of Nazareth? We have to have living reality and the Lord today, we can't say, I think Moses couldn't say, I think I was visited by God. He said, Pharaoh, I am sent me and said to let his people go. And when we speak in the name of the Lord, we've got to have his message. We've got to know what he said. It's the message from the burning bush. Oh, glory be to God. And it goes on and on. All the benefits of the old rugged cross. Oh, the hedge that was around Job is included in the message of the burning bush. The sacrifice of Abraham is included in our message from the burning bush. Did you know that? Why, the angel that protected Daniel in the den of lions, our, that same protection for us is in the message from the burning bush. Rise up and take another look. Rise up and decide like the apostle Paul. I know in whom I have believed, and I know that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him. And just like the message from the burning bush, the Israelites are going out. They're going into the land of Canaan. Uh, we're getting ready to get out of here. Uh, our message includes the second coming of the Lord Jesus. The soon coming. It won't be long now. And that's a great message, isn't it? Go everywhere telling the news. Uh, and tell yourself every morning when you get out of bed, this may be the day that he will come. Look up, redemption draweth nigh. And you look up, you know that the Lord is soon coming. Look up and you know uh, that it won't be long now. Do you believe in the message of the burning bush? Is the fire of Pentecost burning on the altar of your soul? Are your lips anointed with the power of Almighty God? Are you living close to God? Are you spending a lot of time with the Lord daily in prayers and fastings? How long has it been since you had a good long fast? Oh, but you say, preacher, yeah, you're going to tell me every time you fast you get a headache. That means three days. Three days will give you a good headache, and by the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, or eighth, or tenth day, you'll be over it. I mean over the headache and you'll be on your way. This kind goeth forth by prayer and fasting. Uh, that's our message from the burning bush. Jesus had come, and he lighted the burning bush. He, he lighted the bush for us just like he had set the bush of flame for Moses. And there it was in a dark world. Many sat in darkness, but they saw great light, didn't they? And he told the disciples to go to the upper room and tarry there. The message from the burning bush, you better get the Holy Ghost if you want to make the rapture because it's going to take the Holy Ghost to get you ready, to get you out of here. He's coming without a church, without spot or wrinkle, and only the Holy Ghost can take the spots and the wrinkles out. Mama, you know that it takes heat to take the wrinkles out, right? And the fire of the Holy Ghost will take the wrinkles out of you. He said he'd give the Holy Ghost to them that obey him. Receiving the Holy Ghost wasn't optional. The Lord commanded his disciples to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he's commanding his disciples today to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. And you'll need the power of God to get you out of here. And this is the Holy Ghost dispensation, so you better yield to the Holy Ghost and be baptized in the power of the Holy Ghost in this, your final walk. You don't have long. You don't have long. And I know 
that preachers and teachers alike are teaching people today that they don't have to have the Holy Ghost to make the rapture, but where did they get the authority to promise you that? And can they stand on God's Word and promise you? Can they really promise you for sure that you will get out without the Holy Ghost? I don't believe a word of it. The Holy Ghost has fallen from heaven, and it's whosoever will can be baptized now. Anything that will keep you from the Holy Ghost will keep you out of the rapture. And he said, pray that you'd be accounted worthy, that you'd be ready to go. And never in the Bible does it say for a child, of God to pray that they'll be accounted worthy to get into heaven. No, sir. No, sir. But it's very special. Very special. Enoch was a type of the church, uh, and Enoch was special, and Enoch was caught away. Elijah was special, and he believed in the signs and the wonders of God, and he had them, didn't he? And he went to heaven alive. Neighbor, you better rise up. You better not let anybody keep you from the baptism. I'm glad I have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And if the Lord would baptize a Baptist family like us in the Holy Ghost, he'll baptize all of you. So get ready and receive the baptism in the Spirit. It doesn't matter what church you belong to the Holy Spirit's for you. It's the message of the burning bush. Oh, hallelujah! Climb up to the upper room and receive what God has for you. Climb up to the upper room. If you want the Word of God to become living reality to you with all its signs and wonders, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. If you want to walk hand in hand with the Lord, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's the message from the burning bush. The message from the burning bush. I believe I could preach all night, but don't run away. I'm going to stop and pray for your sick and you that have joined us by television. It's the message of the burning bush. And if you're unsaved, get ready to be saved. If you're bound with alcohol, let the Lord set you free. If you're bound with drugs, let the Lord set you free. No matter what binds you, you can be liberated. That's the message from God's burning bush for you. And there's deliverance, and you that are unhealed can be healed. It's the message from the burning bush. Thank God for the old rugged cross, and thank God for Pentecost. Thank God for the healing touch of Jesus of Nazareth. You that are bound in any way, the Lord sent me to tell you you can be free. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Press your hand against mine on the television screen, and I'm agreeing with you. And if you want to be free, you will be free. Thou foul spirits that binds the people that are agreeing with me that they will be set free now. Yea, in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I command it done. Yea, 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 in the name of the Lord. And lift up that right hand, sinner, and say, O oh God, I confess. All of my sins, I'm sorry that I sinned against you, but I have come home, and I'm going to serve you, Lord, the rest of my life. I believe that Jesus died for me, and I will live for him. And I believe that the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. Say, come on in, Jesus. Come on in, Jesus. If you mean it, he has come. You who are sick and afflicted, the Bible said if two would agree on any one thing touching heaven, it shall be done. You are one. I am too, and I'm agreeing with you. Jesus said, if you abide in me, and my word abides in you, you can ask what you will. And I'll tell you, I'm abiding in him, and his word abides in me. And if he abides in you, and his word abides in you, we're ready now. We're ready to do business with heaven. Put your hand against mine on the television screen. You that are crippled, get ready to walk. You that are blind, get ready to see. You that have cancer, sugar, diabetes, or heart trouble, get ready to be made whole. No matter what your sickness or affliction might be, the Lord is the healer. And in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, I bring the sick to you just now. And in the name of Jesus, heal, heal, heal. In the name of the Lord and O oh neighbor, the presence, the healing presence of the Lord is flowing to you right now. The healing presence of the Lord is coming down on you right now. <laughs> Let that power get you well in the name of Jesus. Write and tell me about it.
call a friend and after the telecast and say, the Lord healed me today or the Lord saved me today. Yes, I want to know about it too. And I will rejoice with you. Friend, if you prayed along with Reverend Angeli, I just know God moved for you. And when you see the manifestation of that miracle, that healing, let us know. We'd love to hear your praise report. In fact, if this Jesus ministry, if this program is a great blessing to you, send us your testimony. You can do so by email. Send it to testimonies at ernestangeli.org. And friend, don't forget, Thanksgiving Holy Communion is just a few weeks away. And it's Friday night, November 26. And make plans to be with us. It's one of the most special services of the entire year. The service starts at 7 p.m. We'll have good music and singing, and we'll have a wonderful communion. Oh, friend, you will be blessed. You know, when people discern the Lord's body in taking Holy Communion, God moves. He blesses. He heals. He supplies people's needs. He gives miracles as well. So be ready to receive from the Lord when you discern his body. And friend, we'd like to invite you to be with us at any point in time. You're always welcome to worship the Lord with us. Every weekend, we have three services, Friday night at 7 p.m. We have a wonderful miracle service, good music and singing, preaching of God's word. And those who are in need of prayer will have an opportunity to have hands laid on them according to the word of God. Sunday at 10 a.m., another great service. Again, more good music and singing, preaching, ministering to the people. And then Sunday evening, it's always a special time in the Lord. Come and be with us. And if you're unable to attend in person, I'd like to invite you to worship the Lord with us in the online stream. It's like being right there in church. And you can have a great blessing, a great miracle from the Lord, even by joining the service online. And all you have to do is become a subscriber to our YouTube channel at Ernest Angley Ministries, because that's where we air our online services. We do so also on Facebook and join us and be greatly blessed. But be sure to hit the notification bell. They will let you know when service time starts. Well, I trust you are greatly blessed. We look forward to seeing you next week. You are special to God.
have a savior he's my best friend and he suffered the burdens and sickness of men there in the garden of gethsemane the tears and the blood flow just for me he died for me jesus he died for me oh his blood and his body was the holy sacrifice and it brought me the victory pierced in his side oh as the son of god chose to die oh thank god for my savior the blessed redeemer my jesus he died for me the Savior who is perfect and pure born of a virgin of this I am sure hung high on a cross he chose not to flee but the choice that he made was to die just for me he died for me He died for me, oh, his blood and his body was the holy sacrifice, and it brought me the victory, pierced in his side, oh, as the Son of God chose to die. The blessed Redeemer, my Jesus, He died for me. And it brought me the victory Pierced in His side Oh, as the Son of God chose to die Oh, thank God for my Savior The blessed Redeemer My Jesus, He died said Redeemer, my Jesus died, died.